Hi, I'm Kendall Trotter. And I'm Steve Hawks. Thanks for tuning in to this edition of the Las Vegas Real Estate Update. Today we have back our good friend and uh, one of the lead REO agents in town, Jason Van Zandt. Jason, thanks for coming in. Thanks for having me. We've been uh, continuing our series on loan fraud, and uh, we thought it'd be uh, um, pertinent to bring Jason in here, who winds up with a lot of the listings that were victims of loan fraud. Well, Jason loves the mortgage fraud. It's made his business quadruple, <laughs> maybe tenfold. <laughs> I'm a big fan. You know. <laughs> well, <laughs> one of the effects of uh, mortgage fraud was the inflated values um, that people didn't realize how inflated they are, but now you are starting to see how inflated they were. What do you think the percentage was of the foreclosures that you were that you received from the bank, what percentage of those foreclosures a year ago do you think was because of fraud? I would say a year ago, probably at least three quarters of them. So 75% minimum? Yeah, probably at least. Okay. And how can you tell? Well, we know how you can tell it's fraud, but explain how we know that it was fraud based on the time frame that it was purchased. What's right. the usual time frame? Well, I mean, we see homes that, you know, or purchased nine months or six months or you know whatever the time frame is before no payments were ever made and you see uh, you look at the history and you know the home says it closed for 500 we look at the tax records we see you know that it actually closed for 800,000 no payments were ever made so obviously I mean you know. a lot of times we'll, we'll, we'll see the MLS it when we're looking for comps we'll see a home was listed for 500,000 and it's sold for 800,000 Right, and no payments were made. I mean, that, well, know. how does it, how does house sell for eight hundred thousand when it was listed for five hundred thousand for so long? Well, mortgage fraud, you know. The cash back. Right, cash back. Numbers were fudged. Appraisals were inflated. You know, a lot of different aspects. So, so that was a, a year ago. So basically, the first wave of foreclosures was mostly due to mortgage fraud. Right, we saw a lot of fraud, and you know, now with everything being exposed and values coming down and you know okay let's talk about this for a second the first wave of foreclosures caused by mortgage fraud second wave of foreclosures caused by everyday average people that can't refinance their arms because, because they have no the, value because of the mortgage fraud they purchased homes based on these inflated values and now not only were they purchased on inflated values now, guys, when Jason gets these properties, the banks obviously need to sell them. They're not, they're not even close to where exactly. they were purchased for. So now the banks obviously need to get some kind of recuperation back. So now they have to sell it for, on a, okay, for example, that house uh, in Sun City that was listed for 500, it sold for 800 with the cash back. Right. So it was inflated $300,000. We know that because it was from 500 to 800, so it was 300 cash back. That's how we know that was at least 300 300,000 cash back. Right. What right. did you sell it for? I sold for 375. So you sold a house for 375,000 that was purchased approximately a year and a half before for 800,000. Right. A year before. So in a year, it went from 800 on paper to 375. On paper's key word here. Right. That on paper is a key word. So, so in reality, it never sold for $500,000 in a hot market. Right. right. So 800000 it supposedly sold for. So obviously, they got $300,000 cash back, didn't make a payment. And what about all those people that are on that, that live on that street? What happens right. to them? Right. Well, I'm selling the same homes on that street now for even less, you know. So let's talk about this. Some thing. people legitimately paid eight, uh, people coming from Florida, people coming from California sure, sure. said, well, that house was 800000 so we'll pay 800000 So what should those people do? I mean, this is a rhetorical question, but what should those people do? Well, well those are the people that are the second wave of foreclosures. They're, exactly. Yeah. Well, there, there's different kinds of, of victims in this whole thing. In our previous broadcast, we talked about the straw buyer who may have not even been privy to what was going on. He's a victim because his credit was ruined because he, he bought 10 houses in one month just thinking he was part of an, an investment group. But the second victim is your everyday average guy and gal that went out and bought a home for their family because they paid fair market value for what a home. What they thought and, was and fair market value. What they thought, well, it was fair market value because they had the comps to support it. 
Inflated well, comps. Inflated comps, but it still was fair market value. That's what houses were selling for. So they took a interest only arm three years in 2004, 2005, now it's 2008. Jason's selling $800,000 homes for $375,000. That is your second wave of foreclosures. And, and to the, to me, in my opinion, these people are even more victims than the first guy that invested in the, um, well, the being part of the LLC right. because they've really been hurt because everybody, it was, it was common knowledge in Las Vegas in 2004, 2005, prices were um, gaining so fast that how could you get hurt? Well, now we know you why. Know, we were the golden city, you know. But now we know um, why. But Did yeah, now we do know why. But at the time, educated buyers were doing this. Um, educated realtors were selling houses for eight hundred thousand because that's what they were worth. Even if it was fraudulently that the first guy bought eight hundred thousand, but well, it throws after off that, all the comps. It throws off all the comps. But what what happened is, is when. They would get one fraudulent sale in that neighborhood. They would what would they do? They would go, oh, we have a comp in this neighborhood. Let's hit up. They we'll hit up the whole it. street because they have comps now. But legitimate realtors didn't know that those were fraudulent at that time years ago. How would you they, know? They did. You know what I mean? Right. You you're selling a house. Right. Your clients want to want the house. You're running the comps. Right. Eight hundred seven seventy five. It was impossible. Eight twenty five. Right. It was impossible I mean, for a realtor to know at that time. There right. was no way. There was no light yeah. shed on it. So at that time, they thought that it was a legitimate comp, and sure. they sold sure. based upon those. And but but. But that's how houses doubled in Las Vegas in one year. I mean, a hundred and fifty thousand dollar house was all of a sudden three hundred thousand a year later. We've seen it over right. and over and over again. And people were dying to buy these three hundred thousand dollar houses before they hit four hundred and fifty thousand. Right. And and you know, the, is the agent at fault? No. Is the buyer at fault? No. Is the borrower at fault? No. Who's at fault? The people that originally inflated the values at that time right okay and it's very easy to tell because all you got to do is look at the mls original list price and then the sales price right. sometimes they put it in the mls however one caveat to that there was a lot of deals in 2004 that paid over list price that wasn't loan fraud that, that, way you that tell was the, the frenzy of the right, market the way you, you know? tell is if a house was on the market for a long period of time, and all of a sudden, and then all of a sudden, sells for more. Right. Then right. that's how you tell. Oh, yeah. But yes. the uh, the state of the market in two thousand four, people were would would buy anything. Well, they most could. of the cash back yeah. fraud started end of two th mid two thousand five. So we'll have to finish this on another uh, I, episode. I do think we're running out of time, and uh, Jason, we really do appreciate you coming in and Absolutely. educating our viewers on this. And like I say, if you want to know the future of real estate. It's right here. We'll see you next time. I'm Kendall Trotter. And I'm Steve Hawks. Thanks for tuning in to this edition of the Las Vegas Real Estate Update.